Welcome to Kingdom Faith International Christian Center, where we are providing knowledge to build people with a heart after God. Please be sure to visit our website at kficc.com for more information about the ministry or to view more messages from our ministry team. I want to mention before we get to point one that John, amen, is the forerunner of Christ. We already made that. So basically, he is announcing that a king is coming. How I many before a king comes, he makes an announcement? And then somebody goes before him. So John is going before Jesus, amen, because he's the preacher. He's the preacher, John, amen. And the word preach means to proclaim. So he's preaching, he's proclaiming, he's actually operating out the gifting that God talks about in Ephesians chapter number four, where it talks about fivefold ministry or word ministry. That means they minister the word, amen. So there's different other ministries that God's given us that we talked about last week, where we have all been called to ministry to serve what God, amen, also to serve mankind. So here in this text, it's talking about the preacher, amen, who's been called to proclaim. And his message, amen, that he's proclaiming is called the kingdom of God, amen, or the kingdom of heaven. It's interchange sometimes the kingdom of God you hear it or the kingdom of heaven now in your notes amen I'm gonna give you a reference because this is important because the message that John was preaching was not very well accepted in the time in which he was living we'll get into that a little bit further but it's important that when someone is ministering or preaching the word it should lead you to Jesus it should lead you to what the kingdom is about it should also lead you what your purpose is in life that's what preaching is for preaching is for exhortation and also also brings correction, amen, in our life, praise God. So here it talks about point number one. We talked about the kingdom. So here's the definition that Miles Monroe gave. Miles has went on to be with his Lord, and he had a great ministry, and still does this going on. It says the kingdom is a government influence of a what king over a territory impacting his power, principles, laws, values, moral produ more morals, producing a community of citizens reflecting the culture and the lifestyle of the king. This was the message. So the message that John is preaching is not so much going to church. The message that he's preaching is not because that's what people are doing. People are going to the synagogues and hearing the priests, amen, open up the Bible and begin to open up different things which were spoken concerning the law and the Moses, amen. All that was their reflection. But here John is trying to take them, amen, a little step further into the full understanding of Christ is coming, but he's coming with a message that's designed to change us from who we are to who he's called us to be. Now, I like this because when you look at this, amen, in this definition of kingdom, you've been hearing that a lot. If you have it, you'll hear it even more and more because this is what Jesus is all about. He's about showing forth another kingdom that's invading the earth, and it's called the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says that kingdom of God is not righteousness. I mean, the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes. So the kingdom, somebody said the kingdom. the kingdom. So the kingdom message is not really relating to the time in which John is preaching to everybody who's heard about that we're going to go to the synagogue and hear the priest give us a word that is contrary to what he's talking about <coughs> are y'all hearing me today now the other thing is you have to keep in mind is that when john is ministering this word uh the kingdom amen in point two it says i mean number one underneath there it says the kingdom is a government what affluence of the king packed with what power how many know when jesus came he came with the authority of his father which is what god the father the spirit of god god put his spirit in a body so everybody can see who jesus Jesus is representing God the Father. He's a spirit. Does that make any sense? Some people get it confused, but don't get confused. You know, I'm a father, amen. Not only that, I'm a son, amen. Not only that, but I'm a husband. I ain't confused. <laughs> Hello? No. I, that's that's a different, what, different manifestations of what I've been designed to do. But God, amen, God, amen, he's a spirit. We would never know who he was because he's a spirit. But what he designed is put his spirit in his in this body called Jesus. He, amen, he is a representation of God and also showing us that he is the king. Amen. I mean, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. So a king came to overthrow the things that they've already been hearing and teaching. Amen. And this is important for you and I to hear this because it talks about that John, remember, we said he's a forerunner. He's preparing people with the message. Are y'all hearing that? Yes. Amen. How do, how do you know if he's coming? You'll never, the Bible says, how should you hear without a preacher? How should a preacher preach except he be sent? See, preaching, it should not be an occupation that you do. Preaching should be something that God is convicted in your heart. You try to wrestle away from it. He's called you to do that. 
and you know that if you don't do that, you're going to upset God's plan for your life and others. Amen. How many know that preaching is designed for you to help edify and encourage other people as you begin to take the word of God yourself and be an example to that word? I'm an example to what? What God has told me concerning the word. What am I saying? I can't tell you to do something out of the word and I not do it myself. Amen. Is that making sense? I have to be an example to what I'm talking about because the preaching, the message is not just for you, but it's for me and you. Can y'all say amen? amen? That's what Paul once says a lot of times. He said, Rich, he said, follow me as I what? Follow Christ. Some people think preaching is an occupation, amen, where they stir people up, get the money out of their pocket, get you to get involved with some social groups and things of that nature, and do things in the community. But it's a step further than that because God wants you to be the message. Somebody said, you the message. You the message. Amen. He wants you to be the tabernacle that he wants to dwell in. So this is the message that John is preaching. And John got a lot of flack, amen, because of what he's preaching. Uh, listen, if you're not preaching the word of God where it should be, amen, there's something's wrong because what? When you start preaching the way God wants you to preach it, it's not going to be what? Acceptable to a lot of people. The reason why? Because we're going against the kingdom of darkness. There's a kingdom already set up, but we're trying to invade that kingdom to overthrow it with the kingdom of light. Can y'all say amen? Yeah. So John, amen, is the forerunner. He's preparing the path of Jesus to be revealed. I mean, oh, John was filled with the Holy Spirit also. Amen. amen. Praise God. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not only that, but he's preaching and he's in a place that's not popular. He's not in the synagogue preaching. This is radical because God does things radical. He doesn't do things through uh, formality or traditional wise. God is not based upon a, a, a structure. Amen. God will do things that will challenge you to let you know that your form of church is not the church that he wants you to be. Because the teaching and the preaching of the word is designed to change you from where you are to get you where God wants you to be. Does that make any sense? So the word that God is designed to challenge you. If you're not being challenged, some people get confused now they think you challenge them they think that you, you you're trying to uh, offend them or hurt them no god when he challenged you he's trying to let you know you ain't in charge <laughs> oh, god amen he's in charge amen. and you can't do things your way and you can't say i already know because there's much that god wants to reveal through his word yeah. can y'all say amen? amen so we're always in this but he's in the wilderness touch your neighbor say he in the wilderness yeah. my god he in the wilderness and then on top of that his clothing is not drawing people people draw people get dressed today just to draw people yeah Y'all ain't saying anything. I've been around places that have been around ministries amen, that people dress a certain way, amen, just to draw people. Amen, because we think that they're of God. You know, if I put my robe on, I got one. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. But, you know, you put it on, amen, for uh, not to draw people, but out of respect to who we are or serving, amen, not against that. So the thing you need to understand, he's in the wilderness, amen, and, and now he's preaching by the River Jordan, amen, and people are coming out to hear the message because it's different. How many know God wants to do something different? Yes, he does. Amen. He's doing, he's preaching, he, he preaching the word, but he's preaching it with so much power and conviction that people, amen, they're being challenged, challenged to alter their life, to come into the kingdom of God and live at another standard that God said they need to live in. Now, I like this because one of the things we do that shows forth some of the things he was doing, amen, in the sixth verse, it says, it says they were baptized uh, in the Jordan and confessing their sins. You don't see that? Mm -hmm. I like that because, see, most people don't realize if you're not taught properly, you do it out of tradition with no knowledge. That's true. Yeah, that's true. People get their babies baptized, and that's out of tradition because if you follow scripture, which we're following today, John, amen, he's preaching the kingdom. The kingdom, once it's heard, is designed to prick your heart, to let you know that you are a sinner, first of all, and you need to be saved. Not from yourself, but also from the world in which you've been taught. Now, with that being said, they come because they've been taught, remember, they've been taught to go to the synagogues. They've been taught to hear the priests bring them the word. They're in an unfamiliar place. They're in the wilderness. And now we have this man, amen, preaching and talking about another kingdom, amen, that's contrary to what they're teaching in the synagogues. Now on top of that, but he's telling them that you need to repent, amen, for who you are, because you know what? The message is God is now not looking at bricks and mortar and stones. He's looking at what's in your heart, and your heart needs to be converted. So the word gets down in their heart so much that the first thing that they do before they get baptized, listen, they confess their sins. See, confession, amen, we, 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 don't, we don't want to confess the dark side of us, you know, like Dark Vader, you know, yeah, the dark side. Everybody's got a Dark Vader in their life, but you know what, you have to confess yourself to say, come out of that. 
Because if you don't confess, amen, the nature of who you really are so God can change you where he wants you to be, you don't give him the license to do that. So what am I simply saying? Amen. Confession and repentance and baptism is what should follow. First, they confess. Oh, you hear me? They confess. In other words, I need help. You know, that's the hardest thing for people to say today because we think we got it all together. And that's a prideful person. I mean, no pride, amen, God resists pride for people. Why? Because, you know, you've already made your man mind up. He's given you the right to make your mind up. He can't violate that because that's your will that he's given you. So he steps back and let time, amen, and energy, and also things happen in life that hopefully you'll yield yourself to realize I need help in my life. Amen. Not just to get a job and make money. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that, but I need to know how to live day to day. Even live with myself. That make any sense? Mm -hmm. So the word, and he's preaching this word, and then finally what happens is they confess their sins. That's the first thing. Somebody, somebody said that's the first thing. That's the first thing. See, before he baptizes them, they don't have to confess their sins. Yeah. You don't hear that much today. People say, I want to be baptized, but it's okay to get baptized after you already confess your sins. What do you mean confess your sins? It's simply saying, I need help. I'm tired of my old life. That's what happens. Confession means you tell on yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm a mindset that, and I know this to be true. If you tell on yourself, the devil ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> Come on now. Before he opened the I already told him. Come on now. Before he even tried. See, the Bible said, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from what? All unrighteousness. See, because when you're dealing with the works of the flesh, and not so much the, your, the atoms in nature, that's something that takes place in your spirit. God erases that, but still you got to deal with the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh, a lot of time, is the memory of sin. Mm -hmm. I, some people sin by memory. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I remember that apple pie. I remember how it smells. Amen. I remember how good it tastes. Amen. And I think I like to have some apple pie. Come on, y'all. Are you hearing me today? So you got to tell yourself, nope, can't eat it today. Praise God. Amen. Because why? We're dealing with that memory that we have. That's why it talks about the renewing of the mind. That's another subject. Praise God. So here, amen, he talks about first a confession came, then repentance. Repentance means to change your heart or change your mind. In other words, repentance means the first two letters in repentance is the word re. Y'all see that? All right, stop what you're doing, turn around, and do something different. See, that's a difference when people say that they're sorry. You know, I do something to offend you, I say I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't bring about a change. Amen. That's right. Sorry is a moment of reality where I know I've done something to offend you, and I'm just asking you to give me a pass because I'm sorry. Yeah. But that doesn't change the nature which caused me to bring the offense. Yeah. Come on, am I talking about? Yeah. So you need to get that because people told God, I'm sorry, you know, and I forgive me, you know, but they don't let God to change what the, the nature that brought about the offense. Yeah. So people still say that they, they love the Lord. Y'all hear me today. Yeah. Not only that, they love the Lord and they'll go to church and they'll go around the spiritual setting, but when they leave, they're going to still go back to their old self. Yeah. So now John is dealing with the Pharisees have come and the Pharisees have come. Y'all hear that? Amen. The Pharisees, they point number three. The Pharisees in the Bible were members of a religious group or party who frequently clashed with Jesus Christ over the interpretation of the law. It says um, the name Pharisee means separated ones. Amen. Then it says they believed that there, there was life after death in the resurrection of the body and the importance of keeping rituals and the need to convert Gentiles. Y'all hear that? See, religion will cause you to attach to a group. If you're not careful, that group, if you see, it's all right, we're a group as a body of believers. But we're not supposed to be hung up on rituals or traditions. Does that make any sense? Yeah, they were hung up on rituals and traditions to the degree that they're trying to convert the Gentiles to do the same thing in order to be saved. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. The Sadducees were one who were the main Jewish, he was, they were political. It was a religious, religious group who clashed with Jesus also pretending that uh, uh, pertaining to the law of Moses. In other words, they considered being upper class and they were a group mostly priests. And it said their beliefs consist of rejection of moral, of, of rejection of oral laws, traditions, and denial of afterlife and a coming of what? 
the Messiah. See, you got two religious groups. See, religion is, what I call religion, is man's best effort to serve God without revelation. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Man's best effort to serve God without having revelation. <coughs> well, somebody say, well, what is revelation? <coughs> Remember, revelation is always progressive. When Jesus came, he said, I didn't tell him to take away what Moses said. He said, I came to fulfill what Moses said. Are y'all hearing me? See, because the fulfillment of Revelation is the maturity of understanding why the Revelation was given in the first place, because it's given to you what to bring you to Christ. So what happened is the Pharisees and traditional people, basically, they wanted to harness the people and use God as a, a tool to harness them and keep them under their control. Are you hearing me? They weren't trying to lead them on to Christ. Because to go to Christ, when once you receive Christ, you got to go to your Christ likeness. <laughs> Is that all right? Some people go to Christ and then they go to church. And they, they went to Christ. They had Christ. They had the law. They had the Moses. They had the Moses Mosaic law. They had all those teachings. They had the priests. Amen. These are people. Amen. Through history, they have been received some endorsement from God, but they didn't stop there, because they were simply the voice of God. How many know that the voice of God is the word of God? Yes. So when the Pharisees and Pharisees came to get baptized, they came to John. They said, we're going to go out here. In other words, he ain't, he ain't coming to the synagogue because John ain't coming to the synagogue because his assignment was to be in the wilderness preaching the kingdom of God that wasn't been preaching in what? In the religious circle because man was using their theology, their human intellect to harness the people, keep them from revelation. Now John is preaching by revelation because he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the revealer of the revelation that we receive. Yeah. Now he's preaching and he's telling them, listen, the order has changed. Yeah. That's what you see. He said, he said, the Pacific said, how y'all worship God? God said, y'all ain't worship that way anymore. I mean, that's a challenge. When you've been worshiping God all your life a certain way, and you've been taught since you were a child, this is how you worship God, and you believe that that's the way, and then finally, somebody stands up with the anointing of God, the power, and you know they're of God because the fool is out there. I don't call him a fool, but it looks like he's a fool. He's in the wilderness preaching, amen, and you know what? There's no chairs, my God. It's radical. People are coming out, amen, and he's, he ain't even dressed right, praise God, but he got a word in his mouth. He got a word in his heart, praise God, and he's preaching in with thunder and lightning, Coming out of his lips. And the word, amen, when they hear it, it's not repetition of what Moses said. It's what God is saying through, through John to them. And they hear God's voice. And God preach their heart. And then they find hiccup the Pharisees and say, see, what's going on here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> They're trying to take my memories, amen. We out here to see what's going on, praise God. Who this so-called preacher, amen, amen, out here calling himself preacher? He, you know what? Has he been ordained by the bishop, amen, to be able to preach out here in the wilderness? Amen. He ain't even got his robe on. What do we call himself doing? What, what's he doing out here? And they came out here. Finally, what happened? They sat around the world so much yeah. that John already knew when they came. He said, "Hope number one, I hope your intentions are right. Because you, if your intentions are wrong, you sit here. He's a matter of fact, I'm gonna call you out." Before, my God, John was a boat. He said, the Bible said, I just said, I'm going to read it so I don't get in trouble, praise God. The Bible says that when they came, but when they saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to, back, to be baptized, he said to them, oh, generation of vipers. He called them vipers. Now, he said, your generation of vipers, your generational teaching has kept people in bondage. Your generational teaching has blocked revelation from coming. Wow. Your generation of teaching has referred to being Moses being the greatest, amen, and the book of the Torah, five books, they're the greatest. There are no books that come after that. He said, you're a generation of, you lead people, amen, like a snake, amen, you put them to sleep under poison, amen. They never know who they are in, in Christ because of the venom that you comes out of your mouth that gets in there and gets in their heart, keeps them from receiving what God has. And John said, I'm here to change the whole story. I ain't scared of none of you. And the Bible said they came out as a group, not only the Pharisees, now you had the Pharisees now you got the sad. They're standing there. You know what? They got the numbers and everything. Now I said, I got God with me, and I'm going to say what God has to say. He said, you generation of God. He said, you are a generation of God. You've been taught, amen, to lead people, but not lead people to God. You have taught people to do things traditionally, but not lead them to God. You're the, you're, you're the plug in the midst of what's going on. God's here to remove you out of your, I need you to come, amen, to where you are, because God said, I need you to come out here so there's no interference from you guys. And now you came out here to bring interference. You need to understand, if you didn't come right, he said, you're not going to get baptized today. 
That's the problem. That you've been preaching all along, but you've been preaching in the air. You need to be saved. That's what he's telling. Yeah. You need to stop teaching that mess. You need to quit leading people the wrong way. You need to, it, oh God, I'm preaching up here today. You know, he, this is all what John was up. He said, you need to stop, you generation of vipers. That's what he says. Then he said, I liked it because he gave them grace. He gave them grace in the next verse, because you know Father Lundgren, so he could have put it, put a period in it right there. In the next verse, he says what? Bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. Yeah, yeah. He said, you can't, don't do like you do in your church. You come up and you say, just receive the Lord, and there's no change in your heart. Yeah. There's no conviction. You never confess your sins. You got the right hand of fellowship, but you never confess your sins. I'm talking to somebody today. Yeah. Wow. You got baptized, but you never confess your sins. Yeah. You just with the group, right there, because it's just a group dynamics, and you know how to get with the group because there's a group at church, and there's a group at your job, there's a group that you hang around, amen, on your Twitter account, and there's a group all the way. With, but listen, this is personal. Touch name, you say, this is personal. This is personal. He said, listen, he said, if you don't bring forth fruits, and the fruits mean behavior, behavior that reflects what's in one's heart. Yeah. I can't get this across to you enough, amen. And I need you to hear this. He's really telling them, listen, leave your religion and tradition alone. Amen. He's saying, you need a change of heart and a change of mind. Mm. Now, tradition and religion is not bad. Let me say that. Tradition and religion should lead us to Christ. Mm. Yeah. It should not be the point where we take communion. Are you hearing me? Yeah. That's could be that's tradition. That's out of tradition. But it's always leading us to who? Christ. To Christ. If it's not leading us somewhere, then it's man's religion, and man will fight to keep you in their religion. Yeah. And even to the point they'll tell you that you're in error. How many know that we're not in error when we follow Christ? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So this word repent, no fruit is behavior that reflects one's heart. Fruit in the Bible is a concept used to describe thoughts, words, and deeds produced by, by someone's soul. So when he tells them, the Pharisees and Sadducees, he said, listen, I'm not against your religion and tradition, but it ain't working. That's what he tells them. He said, that stuff ain't working. It's good, but it ain't working. Matter of fact, God gave, me, God gave us that because it's supposed to lead us to Christ. Are you hearing me? Amen. He got, I said, God gave us that. Amen. He gave them the priests that they had to confess their sins every year. But now he says, listen, I'm going to change the order of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So to follow God, you have to, first of all, hear God and know that what he's required for you is a change of heart, change of mind. Yeah. God did not save us to remain the same. He's on the Pharisees. Now, listen, if you don't have the confession of your sins, come on, if you don't repent, he said, I can't baptize you. I said, he said, if you don't confess your sins. That's why I'm just babies get baptized. Babies can't confess their sins because they ain't, they ain't committed no sins. But out of tradition, people do that. I Sometimes I say, why do you do that? That's not what the Bible said. I ain't seen nowhere where Jesus baptized a baby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, my, see, it gets back, we have to get back to what the Word says. When they should get baptized, when they're of, of age, when they understand right and wrong. Come on here, somebody. Yeah, that's right. yeah. that's and then they understand that somebody's ministered them and said, told them, listen, all that have sinned and come short of the glory of God, which simply means our nature, amen, is not in reflection of who God called us to be, so we need to be born again. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we get born again? The way, the gateway to get born again is, first of all, is submission to what God said. If God said you're a sinner, you need to repent, you know what? You don't even talk about, we're talking about, well, I don't need to repent, amen, because I'm, I'm okay. I'm, no, no, in the light of who God says is, we need to repent because we have the Adam's sin nature inside us. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? So that, that once a child, amen, has understood that and they want to confess their sins, they understand that they need Christ in their life to help them through this game called life. Does that make any sense? Because see, some people have been many versions of life. When Jesus said, I am the way, come on, I am the truth, I am the life. He said, life the way God has designed it is revealed through the one who created it, which is God. So if you're trying to find life outside of God, you're going to be in error. Yeah. And your life will be in error because what? You're trying to find life. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, I'm preaching up here today. In other words, how you're going to live life is, is through me. And you got to get a biblical understanding of what life is because life is not having a car, not like going on vacation. That's by Life. life has to deal with something that's going on in your heart and your mind and reflection to God. Yeah, that's right. Is that all right? Yeah. 
Is that all right? Yes. Yes. Fruit is the concept that describes the thoughts, words, deeds produced by someone's soul. That's why he told the Pharisees, don't come and just say you want to receive Christ. I need to know in thoughts, words, and actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This word also, if you look at it, repentance should become a lifestyle. And with this type of practice, it will keep us from producing fruit that doesn't reflect Christ that's within us, that starts with a choice. Uh, will it be worked? Will it be the works of the flesh or the fruit of the spirit? This is after we get saved. Listen, let me give you a crazy point. When you repent, somebody should repent. You stop what you're doing. You turn around. Who are we turning to? We're turning to the word. We're turning to the word because, listen, now I have to become a disciple or a student to the word. Some people are afraid of the Bible. You know why they're afraid of the Bible? Number one, they don't want to read it. That's just fear. That's all fear. You know, everybody has a good fear about it. Fear, some fear is good. Is that right? I mean, when you go to class and they say, you have to read this, and you be like, can I watch it on DVD? I mean, no, you got to read it. That means you got to science yourself, you got to process, you got to read, you got to get it inside. So the, the, the same way we learn educationally wise, and education is the same way we learn education through the Bible. Is that right? Yeah. So the thing here, amen, when we understand that repentance means a change of heart, a change of mind, it's about the heart and the mind of the person. That's why the Pharisees missed it, because what they were teaching was more or less uh, external, amen, service to God, but not change internally from their heart and their mind. Yeah. So when they understand that when we repent, amen, he said, bring forth fruits of repentance, what he simply saying, are you ready? Come on, somebody, somebody say, are you ready? Are you ready? As you hear this word about the kingdom, are you ready to change your thoughts? Are you ready to change your words? Are you ready to change how you act? Why is that so? Because remember what I said, the kingdom message, amen, is a governing influence of a king or a territory impacting his power, principles, life, values, moral, pr morals produced in a community of citizens. All that's talked about one's heart and one's mind. One's heart and one's mind. My heart and my mind. Somebody say, my heart and my mind. So now he's telling them, listen, all this external service to God is okay, but God's now looking for worship. Worship in one's heart and one's mind. Can y'all say amen? amen? So when we repent, amen, amen, when we repent, it should bring forth fruit. Now, hear this. The word that we receive is a seed. So I said, the word that we receive is a seed. I'm walking this out. I want you to get this. I want you to miss this. Every seed inside of the seed has designed to bring forth what? Fruit. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if, if you want apples, you have to plant what? <coughs> oh, y'all smart over here today. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Amen. So basically, what's in your heart, if you plant the word in your heart, the word of God is designed to create new behaviors. Mm -hmm. Is that all right? Yeah, that's good. They have to, Sister, you don't have, it will create new behaviors. In other words, if you meditate on the word enough, it's designed to do a work in you. That's where the Bible talks about, uh, it says that the word of God is sharp and powerful than the two-edged sword. It cuts the sin of the soul and the spirit and is discerning of the intents of the heart. The word of God is designed to do surgery in you. That's why when John is preaching, they're hearing it. But the word, when you hear it, it gets down in your heart. Come on now. Yeah. And when it gets in your heart, it makes you, amen, to see something different than you saw before. Is that making any sense? Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it also has the time to create in you the things that God desires for you to come out of you. Is that all right? Yes. Now, here's the thing. Now, that's why I use the word repentance, becoming a lifestyle. Because even though we repent, we need to continue to repent to God day. Continue yes. to look to God day. I don't want to look to myself every day in the mirror. <coughs> Brian. <laughs> You know you gotta got you gotta go on home, boy. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's okay to reflect who you are, but don't let that be your your observation throughout the whole day. <laughs> Cause then you'd be too much full of your <laughs> Come on, talk to me, amen. And then anytime you're full of yourself, amen, what happens is your thoughts, your minds, your words always proceed from you and not from what's inside of you. Not make any sense. So I like this because repentance means to stop what you're doing, turn around, and now we're going to produce some fruit. Some fruit that reflects that's been a change in my heart and change in my Not a change in my mind, just in my mind, but a change in my heart and my mind. Listen, if you don't get anything else today, you need to hear this. God, through this message, amen, is referring to us that we have to be aware that don't, we don't get caught up in religion or tradition. 
Don't get caught up in it. Amen. Let it be a gateway, amen, that leads you to Christ. Yeah. There you go. Is that all right? Yeah. Because it should lead us, amen. Amen. Moses, I mean, what, what, when Moses, amen, and that was when Abraham, Abram becomes Abraham, he introduced to us one thing, how to live by faith. He was the, Abraham is the father of faith. Why did God have to interject that? Because Adam fell in the garden. That plan got tore up. Because yeah. yeah. God's original plan was not to have faith. Because what? We already had faith that we was created in his image. Whatever he had, we had. Yeah. Come on now. Whatever he had, we had. Yeah. I said, whatever God had, we had. Yeah. But when he, met, when he messed up, he messed up for all of us. That's why the Bible said, all have sinned yeah. and come short of the glory. Yeah. By inheritance, you have received in your nature, amen, the human sin, human nature is the Adam sin nature that's inside of you, and that nature is to please oneself. Yes. Come on now. Yes. So the word is going to say, you know what? Dethrone yourself, Ron. <laughs> Dethrone yourself. Cast yourself down, Ron. But cast it down what? On submission to God. Yeah. How do I do that? First, submit to what he tells. The first thing that God, John, tells them, you have to confess your sins. Yeah. Then after that, then you have to repent in your mind and say, I'm ready to make the change. Yeah. Once those things have been produced out of you, now we're going to baptize you, submerge you underwater, which is submission to God. You are no longer in control. When I baptize people, I say, relax. Why I got to tell them? Because a lot of times they say, I have to say, I got you. Come on now. We ain't going to drown you. Come on here, somebody. <laughs> just relax. I, I know you're not used to having people put your hands in people's care. Amen. Mm -hmm. But this is what God has told us. We have to submit to somebody else's care who's anointed of God. That understand they have care for you. Right. Glory to God. Yeah. Then we do the same process themselves. Amen. To yield. Amen. To God. And get down in this water knowing that when you take me down. Glory to God. You're going to bring me back up again. <laughs> How many of you going to bring me back up? Amen. So the water, if you re read the Bible in Romans the water is a, a type of being buried. So when we get baptized, we leave something in the water. It's supposed to be sitting down. When you get baptized, you buried something. It's a mirror of burying and also what? Resurrection. Notice that when you resurrect, being resurrected from baptism, somebody has to what? Lift you up. If nobody lifts you up, you got to struggle, try to get up out. That's not what the process is about. So when somebody baptizes you in the name of the Lord Jesus, you're showing a symbolic to say, I'm done with my old self. Yes. I'm so glad that I got to understand yes. Yes. that my old self, you don't want to see my old self. If you see my old self, you'd be like, wouldn't nobody be sitting here today if they see my old self. <laughs> if somebody seen my old self, they'd be saying, you know what, he need to get saved. <laughs> if somebody seen my old self, hey amen, they'd be like, you know what, he ain't worth listening to. Does that make any sense? Yeah. I like this word because we're referring to us today. We still have those challenges today. People are still caught up in the religion. They, they're socializing with groups. That's their identity. Your identity shouldn't be in a group. Oh, I'm hitting something today. I'm almost done. Your identity should be in a person. In his name called Jesus. And then, well, I want to follow the group that's following Jesus. Is yeah. that all right? Yeah. It's all right following a group, but make sure you follow the group that's following Jesus. Yes, Look today and say, don't just follow anybody. Because, see, the Bible talks about there's a gate. Why is the gate? And that gate that leads to destruction. Now, keep this in mind. Now, I'm almost done here. The thing that you need to understand, I love this part. The kingdom of God that John is preaching is a promise of what God had given through even Father Abraham. God wants to save us from ourselves. Amen. Amen. Now that'll preach. Yes, sir. We think that God wants to save us from the devil. No, he's already been defeated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that all right? Yes. God's trying to save us from ourselves. From our own self. Is that all right? Yes. But first he saves us from the Adam's nation. That's when he begins in creating us a new spirit. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We've been born again afresh. Something has been awakened in our spirit, amen. And it's been a deposit from God through Jesus Christ, whom we have verbally accepted and asked him to come into our hearts. And now he's tabernacling within us. The next step is now he wants you to become Christ-like. Not flesh-like, but Christ-like. And now you're going to have a fight. And the fight is, is that if you don't deal with your old memory and replace it with something new, you're going to have what? Conflict. Yeah.
Because the conflict is that Christ is already inside of you. He's not going to abandon himself inside of you, even though you mentally don't want to do what he tells you to do. Well, I'm preaching up here today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what he do? He's going to ride you like a pony. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what God does. He will ride you gracefully like a pony. Why would he ride you? Because he's trying to get you to turn away, turn away from your old self. Turn away from your, that's a change of heart and a change of mind. Yeah. He will ride you in and ride you in the midnight hour. Especially, he'll let you ride, you can, you can take him to places where you know you don't need to be, but he'll let you go there. But when it's over, he's riding your conscience. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking to you, said, you know, you've been born beyond that. You know, you, you're greater than that, amen. Yeah. Why are you hanging around people who don't know who their destiny is? Yeah. And I'm calling you to a greater destiny inside of yeah. I want you to learn my ways, amen. I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you should find a rest unto yeah. your soul. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I got things better from you than better than yourself, amen. Yeah. He says, I got plans already prepared for you beyond your plans. Yeah. Your plans are too small. My plans include not only you, but other people that I want you to bless, amen. Yeah. Your plans just include you and what you want to do. All God right. said, you know what? Right. We got to understand a repent of heart. Means I got a repentant mindset. I wake up in the morning ready to turn to God, ready to look in the mirror of His Word, not trying to look at myself. He no greater as He is in me. I have to tell myself that so I can get out of the memory of who I used to be. I got to erase that memory and memory and put in a new memory because God wants to take us somewhere beyond the places we've never been before. Are you hearing me today? And you deserve to get this. And I said I done wrong last week. I don't get you. Be, if you confess, you've been forgiven. I said if you confess, you've been forgiven. If you already told him yourself, the devil ain't got nothing to say. I, I told God I cursed last week. You know what? And the devil said, I'm going to go tell him. I'm going to run and tell him what you I said, I've already told him. Amen. Amen. And I knew it was wrong. Yeah. And I asked God to forgive me. And then, you know what? Now I forgive myself. Yeah. Yeah. Say that. Come on, touch it and say, it's time for you to forgive yourself. Right. You're wallowing in something that God, you've asked God to forgive you, and he done already forgave you. You're wallowing in that stuff. You need to pick yourself up. You need to change your heart, change your mind, and tell yourself, I've been forgiven. You know what? That thing is behind me in the name of Jesus. You know what? I ain't going to that slop hole anymore, right? I pass it by, but I know where it is. I ain't going there anymore. Don't wear my preacher here today. Yeah. Tell me they said, I've been forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. The devil loves the hardest thing to keep us. That's condemnation. Condemnation is guilt. Guilt means when you're in prison. Prison means you can't get out. Let me tell you something. You've been out when you ask God to forgive you. Now you never walk it out. Praise God. Touch me and say, walk that thing out. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope that the word of God has blessed your life richly. Please be sure to visit our website at kficc.com for more information about the ministry or to view more messages from our ministry team. If you would like to give a financial gift to the ministry, just go to kficc.com slash donations and click on the yellow and blue donate button. You can also stay up to date with encouraging word throughout the week by joining our social media sites. You can search for us on Facebook. Just search for Kingdom Faith International Christian Center. You can also find us on Twitter. Our handle is at KingdomFaithInt. You can also find us on Instagram. Our handle is at KingdomFaithIntLCC. And of course, we're on YouTube. Search for Kingdom Faith International Christian Center on YouTube and be sure to like and subscribe to get the updated messages. We want to thank you again for visiting us. And may God bless you and prosper you in all that you do. In Jesus' name, be blessed.